if you've never had sweet potato biscuits, and you're in for a treat. These are so good at any meal, and I think that they would go great as one of your breads for your Thanksgiving table. You know, we make the hot rolls or the homemade bread or the cornbread, but I really think that sweet potato biscuits would go just really good on your Thanksgiving table or even Christmas table. What I've got in my bowl is I've got two and one-fourth cups of all-purpose flour. And I need three and a half tablespoons of baking powder. I need a couple of teaspoons of sugar. And if you want to, you can use brown sugar. I'm just going to use white sugar. My sugar's not coming out very good. There you go. Two teaspoons. I need a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to mix this up. Now your recipe calls for six tablespoons of cold butter. What I like to do is I like to shave mine up like this, just grate it. And really and truly when you grate it like this, you really don't. You just kind of mix it in there. You don't have to work so hard to, you know, combine it into your flour. So now you want to take your six tablespoons of butter. You can use uh, unsalted butter. And it's sticking together. It's a little bit warm in this kitchen. And I'm just going to work this in with my, my big fork here that I love. You know, I've always used just a, a regular fork or, you know, my pastry blender. I seen um, the lady from uh, Color Valley Cooks. I seen her use it a long time ago. And I thought, I am going to order me one of those because I really liked it. And uh, it was just like the ones that my grandma used to use. So I ordered me one. I really like it. So I'm just going to kind of work that in a little bit. Six tablespoons. Now, all you need is three-fourths cup of buttermilk. You need three-fourths cup of mashed sweet potatoes. And this is my canned sweet potatoes. And Miss Vicki from Vicki's Country Home, she bought me the neatest thing and sent it to me. And this is an old-fashioned uh, opener for your can for your jars. And I'm telling you what, I love this thing. And they're not easy to find because I sure couldn't find one. But she found one and sent it to me. Thank you, Miss Vicki. So I'm going to drain this real quick. back over here to you and uh, a little bit of butter in there I'm not sure this may be just a little bit more than three-fourths of a cup but whatever it makes that's what we're going with so I'm just gonna mash that up you know if you got sweet potato laid around just uh, bake it up boil it uh, as long as you got about three three-fourths cut once you get it done If you don't have any buttermilk, just use, uh, you could use even some heavy cream, but it's going to take a little bit more. Because y'all know how good them uh, two ingredient biscuit recipe I done a while back. 
them are some of the best biscuits. I had a lot of people that made them and they just loved them. Okay, three fourths cup of buttermilk. Let's pour that in there. Mix that up with your sweet potatoes. Now you're not going to bake these as high as you would for regular biscuits. We're just going to bake this at 350, but we're going to bake them a little bit longer. Regular biscuits are usually about 425, 450 in my oven for about 15, 20 minutes. But these are going to bake differently. 350 oven. So I think I've got that mixed up pretty good. So now we're going to pour this mixture into our flour mixture. Oops. We're just going to start working that in. It's going to come together pretty fast. Make sure I get all that flour worked in there. I don't want to overwork it. And it's pretty loose. If it's too loose, you can add a little bit more flour. So I'm going to take it out on my, board, on my biscuit table here and uh, work it up just a little bit. I'm gonna add just a little bit more flour because it's a little loose to me. I didn't have buttermilk, so I made me some buttermilk out of just regular milk and a little bit of vinegar. And sometimes that's just a little bit, uh, it's not as thick. Okay. If your dough still seems a little bit loose, just keep pulling some flour in it. I just floured my, my biscuit table real good. And I don't want to work this too much. The dough is real soft, real workable. So what I'm going to do, get my rubber. I know people make fun of my little roller here, but I love my little roller, especially when I'm making tortillas, stuff like that. I'm just going to roll this out just a little bit. And I'm going to take it and fold it over just like that. I'm going to roll it out, and we're going to cut them. I'm going to put them on my, my little cast iron skillet. That's what I like to cook my biscuits on. And if it was colder than it is, we'd be making them in a wood cook stove, but it's not. It's 70 degrees again today. <laughs> Let me wash my hands. And let me get my little cast iron skillet, get it greased up good, put some bacon grease or something on it, and uh, we'll be back and cut them out. Okay, I got my skillet here. Now, you can use any size you want to. If you want them like a regular size biscuit, that's good. I'm thinking I'm going to use this size. I think that would be a good size, especially if you're going to be using them on your Thanksgiving table. You can use your regular biscuit size. Um, I even have one of these that uh, we can use to make it, you know, have some pretty 
scallops on the edge. So you can see how pretty that would be. See the edges. And I'm just going to take them, just kind of dredge them through the grease. Now, when we get all these on here, you can just put you a little bit more uh, baking grease or whatever you got, whatever you're using on top of them. Or you can use... Uh, Mix you up a little egg yolk with a little teaspoon of water and kind of brush the tops of them. It'll make them really pretty. Golden on top. But I just think this, these are just so, this would just be so pretty on your holiday table at this size right here. Or any size, but I just think this is really sweet. And really and truly, you put you a little bit of a dollop of butter and some honey on that. Woo wee, you talk about good. So I'm gonna get the rest of these cut out. I'm gonna have to get me another cast iron skillet. And we'll be back when I get them all cut out. tops of these. See how pretty they're going to make it. Especially if you're going to serve this on a holiday table. Which I can tell you right now, me and Mr. Brown are going to enjoy these tonight with our supper. And um, I'll take some to school tomorrow. Let them eat on them. And then I've got a few that I've cut out and I'm going to put them on a cookie sheet and I'm going to freeze them and put them in a bag and then use them later. So that's a good idea. You can make these ahead of time and uh, freeze them and then cook them later. 350, about 40 minutes. Depends on your oven. So let's get these in the oven. So my beautiful wife has made you some sweet potato biscuits, some food for your body, and now I'm going to give you a little bit of food for your soul. It's going to be a little bit of lengthy reading, but bear with me. I'll try to get through it. We're going to go back to the beginning of time. Sometimes we need to step back and just think about things from the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and the darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. 
and there was light. And God said the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, Let the waters underneath the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, Let there lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Let them be of signs and seasons and of lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God said, Let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and even living things that every living thing that moves with which the waters abound according to their kind. And every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas let the birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beast and the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of the earth. And every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, 
to every bird of the air and everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life. I have given every green herb every green herb for food and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all of his work which God had created and made. <clears throat> Sometimes we got to just step back and just remember how powerful, how mighty our living God is. We have to realize that God's in control of this world. We don't know what he has in control for us or in store for us. We really want God's will to be done in all things. For he knows what's best for us. And we know that if we do what he commands us to do, and if we love him, we'll keep his commandments. If we do what he tells us to do and remain faithful to the end, that life on this earth is very short. It is like a vapor that appears and then vanishes away. But we have a place called heaven that we can go to, can have a life worshiping our God in heaven forever and forever. And that's our, that's our goal in life. That's what we strive for. No matter how tough it gets here on this earth, God provides for his people. And remember that he's so powerful and so mighty that we as humans can't remember or can't fathom how powerful that is. May y'all have a Good day, and may God bless you.